It's uh, Martin Ball here from the ISIS Neutron Source. This is one of the most uh, famous research centres and we're standing outside of it so you can see the flags of all our partner countries. But there's a really neat model here. ISIS is situated around an accelerator. It's a synchrotron which takes protons, accelerate them to high speed and then when they've reached their final speed they're fired off down this beam line here where they hit the target. The energy is dispersed by causing the atoms of the target to release neutrons which then fly out in all directions down to the beam lines. Every different uh, beam line or uh, neutron instrument is dedicated to doing a different type of science. So it could be physics, it could be chemistry. Some of them are looking at the structure of materials and some of them are looking at what's called the dynamics or the motions of the atoms. This is the control room, so you can um, just come through. Uh, so this is the uh, main control room where we run the accelerator from. So we've seen the control room and um, we're going to see the experimental areas. So welcome to ISIS Target Station 1, it's uh, pretty big. The main structures you can see just to get your bearings are down the middle is the proton beam which is fired from the accelerator and then towards the far end of the hall is uh, the bunker in which the neutron target lives. So we're walking on top of the proton beam, so beneath our feet bunches of protons travelling at near light speed. So we've come up uh, on this balcony where we can just see, overlook the experiments and the target. You can see the kind of different coloured areas uh, which are different experiments. So big green one, big red one, and there's a few others sort of tucked away under the flooring here. Now actually the neutrons coming out are very, very fast and they're going at too high a speed to be useful um, for experiments. So we have to slow them down. So they pass through little boxes of things like liquid hydrogen, liquid methane called moderators. And all of that is contained inside the bunker because as well as neutrons coming off, there's all sorts of other things coming off like high energy gamma rays um, and things you, you don't want to have coming out into the experimental hall. So the shielding there is about four meters thick and only the neutrons come out into the beam lines where we want them. So every beam line has a name. Some places in the world they choose to number their beam lines, one, two, three, four, five. At ISIS, they've all got names that you can remember. This one is called CRISP. Rumor has it it was named after a famous racehorse. Uh, we've got ones called Tosca, Merlin. It just goes along with the imaginations of the scientific teams who've helped to build them. So the, the beam lines are switched off. Normally we'd have to open all the keys and the gates, but it's open so we can just walk in. So behind this wall, some meters back, is the neutron target. It's releasing neutrons um, when it's operating. And they come through the small hole um, into the beam line and pass through all the various components here which are used to treat the beam and get it to the, have the right qualities until it reaches the sample position. This is where you put the experiment, the thing you want to measure. And then the beam carries on through other components until it reaches the detector, which will give you a data pattern. And the data pattern is related to the structure of the sample that's in the beam. And it's, then you have to work backwards and figure out what happened to give you the pattern in the computer so that you can understand what's going on in the material. And that's the day-to-day -day life of an experiment. So uh, this is nice uh, team photo. Where are you? Uh, I'm here at the back here, so. <laughs> and uh, here's, our, here's our managers and our director, Andrew Taylor. Neutrons are actually a, a really brilliant way to measure things. So as a particle, they have no electrical charge, which means that when they pass through matter, they don't cause any disruption, like an X-ray would or a, even a proton. They don't cause any physical damage. Because they have no electrical charge, they're also very penetrating, so you, don't, you go beyond the surface and deep into the material, so you get to see what's happening right inside. Uh, and also they, they have a, a, a magnetic uh, component to them, so they're able to measure magnetism. So you've got these, these great um, kind of set of, of kind of qualities that gives a completely unique view of the world. We're outside because we need to go to the second target station, uh, which is this big white building here. So uh, seven years ago this was just grass and uh, we got uh, 145 million pounds from the government to expand because we're so popular and also we wanted to do new science as well, which uh, was difficult to fit into the old target station, so we built target station two. So we send what, four pulses in five to target station one, and the fifth one goes to target station two. The, this, is, this building is pretty big, so um, it's kind of, it's the size of a small football stadium. Uh, so this uh, collection of um, things is, are magnets from the proton beam, so they're spares. These uh, things here, these sort of coppery coils, uh, are, are where you put the electrical current that generates a magnetic field. 
and the beam of particles travels through the center here, uh, usually in a tube um, with all the air sucked out. So it seems pretty quiet here at the moment. That's because we're just getting ready to start doing experiments, and that's why we can go inside things. So when we're running, we have each year uh, about 800 experiments we do, over 2,000 research visitors coming. And the big blue bunker in the center is where the target lives, the neutron target. And then this target station, it's tiny. It's about this big. It's like the size of a packet of biscuits. So um, this tiny, tiny object receives high energy proton beam, 48 kilowatts of power dumped into this thing, liberates all its neutrons. And we have to cool it with water as well, stop it melting. Some of the range of science that's taken place on this target station just in the last year um, kind of is illustrative. So we had some surgeons here from the John Radcliffe Hospital looking at uh, an, an implant that could be used to treat cleft palates right through to some, some folks developing um, a new way to store hydrogen that could be, so it could be used for cars. So complete, it's spread of science. <laughs>